the fall drawdown looks to be slow to start. The single family market looks to be getting into the action, but is the condo market being stubborn or are they just a little late to the party? Oh, and get ready for multiple offers, way over asking price and no home inspection market conditions again, because they're coming. In this video, we're going to go over the single family condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do an interest rate update, which uh, it's looking to be a pretty good one. Because interest rates, they're headed down. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions about the real estate market, then no, I am here to help. Be happy that you're not in my social circles of all these real estate agents because it's a bunch of belly aching and unoriginal posts that people just copy from one another and then post to their own public pages if they're the genius. This is an example of one that has just taken fire online all over the place. It says, if these rates scare you now, wait until they come down and buyers flood the market again. Imagine making your fifth offer, waiving home inspection and guaranteeing $30,000 cash appraisal gap coverage just to try to win against 10 other offers. Huh. I hate to say it, but there's some truth behind this one. Buyers waiting on the sidelines for interest rates to go down look to be getting their wish. But when you pray for rain, you got to deal with the mud too. But let's take a look at how the numbers work out. Let's just say interest rates move down to 6%. I personally would be shocked if they're at 6% next year, but let's pretend. So a $500,000 mortgage at today's 7.5% equates to a $3,496 per month principal and interest payment. Now at 6%, that means that the principal and interest payment is reduced to $2,997. That's a $499 per month savings. That's what I'm talking about. That's awesome. But wait, the lower interest rates means that there's going to be a lot more competition for that house. So that house won't sell for the amount it would in today's marketplace. Let's just say the house goes over asking price for a very reasonable estimate of, I call it 10%. Our new loan amount is 550 grand at 6%, which means that principal interest payment is $3,298. That kind of sucks but it's still $198 or $2,376 per year difference. That's real money. But $2,376 could very quickly be eaten up with just one minor problem that could have been found in a home inspection, which a buyer most likely won't be able to do in a crazed lower interest rate market again. Or maybe a buyer had to use appraisal gap coverage language and the appraisal came in short, so they had to dig deep into those pockets and find another thirty grand in savings to cover that difference. Is $2,376 per year worth taking on the risk of no home inspection? Is it worth the hassle of having to write 10 offers before you finally get one? Having to dedicate not a month or two to looking at houses, but dedicate six or nine months of viewing houses and putting in offers and then being disappointed. Oh, and if you're one of those buyers who are putting a minimal amount down, think 3 or 5%, speaking from experience here, but this lower interest rate market really sucks for you. Chances of you winning a competitive bid where you go up against seven or ten other offers because, well, slum to none. Unless you crazily overpay for that house, that is. Yeah, it very well may not be long. The people are clamoring for the good old days of higher interest rates. May not, but we're going to get into that in a couple minutes. And by the way, if you're an investor who's looking for off-market houses, then reach out. Because I would love to hear what your buy boxes are. We get off-market opportunities each and every day, and I would love to you know, just play a little game of matchmaking. Just recently, we had one in Foxborough, fix and flip. Another one in Newton, which would be a teardown and build a new house on it. I can't send you these below-market value opportunities unless I know about you. And just as a heads up, these off-market opportunities are cash or hard money only investments. No conventional financing is allowed. Now, let's get into it all and jump into the single-family market stats. Inventory in the single family market has started its yearly retreat. There are 4,656 single family houses on the market in the state of Massachusetts. This means that there are just 0.04% more houses on the market today than just 28 days ago, as inventory fell by 63 units last week. Now, this is the beginning of the trend. Inventory will continue to draw down as we go into the winter months. Historically, inventory decreases until about the end of January, stays about level in February, and then we start to see levels start to build towards the middle to the end of March. Now, we've talked about it before. What happens this fall is a precursor to that spring market. If inventory has a major drawdown, then expect a tough spring market for buyers. If the inventory drawdown is on the weak side, then that ultimately means there will be more inventory for buyers to choose from, 
in the spring market, and that could spell, well, for some weakness on the seller side. Will the drawdown be like the 33% that we saw in 2022, or will it be more like the 47% in 2021? Inventory levels are one of the most important parts to the equation that I start formulating my predictions of what's going to happen in 2024. But as I said last week, there is little doubt that this fall market is the best buying opportunity that we've seen in 2023. And I expect it's going to be a much better opportunity than what buyers will be dealing with in the spring of 2024. You can see the start of the downward trend line better in this chart. But what is really standing out to me is not nearly as aggressive decrease in inventory levels compared to 2022 and 2021. When we look at the inventory gap for 2023 versus 2022, then we now have 648 fewer houses on the market than we did at the same time last year. Now, the inventory levels between these two years tightened by 44 units this week. But when you compare this year to 2021, then the amount of more inventory on the market today actually grew to 824 units this week. That's a 276 unit increase in just one week. To say it another way, buyers today have 824 more houses today to look at on the market than they did the same time in 2021. If the fall inventory pullback doesn't pick up steam, then the 2022 levels may be within breach. There were 775 single family homes that came on the market this week. And now our listing activity was only three units or 0.4% off of 2022's numbers when 775 single family houses came on the market. The four week rolling average is 919 units. We are not worried about this number as a comparison because we know inventory is going to be pulling back. And while new listings came in at last year's pace, like last week, the under agreement data was weaker. We had 787 homes go under agreement, which was 9.4% less than the same week last year when 869 single family houses went under agreement. This is a little below that 10 to 15% average that we've been seeing for the last two months, but close enough that it's not making me dig too deeply into these numbers. Now that four week rolling average is 852 units. So we were below that four week rolling average for under agreements as well. So when compared to last year's markets, new listings were off by 0.4% while under agreements, they were off by 9.4%. There were 498 single family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $733,000 and a median sales price of $600,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were down by 9% as there were 548 single family houses that sold this week last year. Now months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in zero to five months. That's considered a seller's market with the closer that you can get to zero, the more aggressive and the stronger the seller's market that it is. Now this week, months of inventory stayed steady at 1.64 months. The 1.64 months this week is compared to the 1.49 months this week last year. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. You knew it was coming. I just wanted to mention that if you were thinking about buying or selling a home, that it would be a true pleasure to help. Now onto the condo market. This one continues to be a surprise but could be playing last year's game with the little tread line. We have 2,627 condos on the market as of Monday. This is a two-unit inventory built, but it's safe to say that inventory is level at this time. The last four weeks, we've had 2,621 units on the market, that 2,612, that 2,625, and now 2,627. There are 2.1% more condos on the market today than 28 days ago, but take a look at this. There are two things that I'm deriving from this chart. The first is that the inventory gap between 2023 versus 2021 inverted this week. We now have 73 more condos on the market today than we did the same time last year. It was just one month ago that we had 416 fewer condos on the market than in 2021. That one happened fast. But look at that chart again and compare it to the 2022 trend line. In 2022, inventory had a little dip at the end of October, but then the inventory levels stayed steady for the next three weeks. It isn't until next week, net last year, that inventory levels in the condo market really started falling. When you compare this week to the same week in 2022, then the inventory gap did tighten a little more as there are now only 136 fewer condos on the market than the same time last year. But the big question is, will next week be the week the inventory in the condo market starts to pull back? If not, then I expect that the 2022 in 2023 levels, they're going to invert it sometime. There were 349 condos that came on the market with a four-week rolling average of 413 condos. Condo new listings were 12 units, or 3.3% off of last year's numbers, but 361 condos came on the market. And our under agreements followed in last year's footsteps with an increase 
this week. Now, this week, we put 322 condos under agreement. This is compared to the 335 that we put under agreement last year. This means there were only 13 units or 3.9% off of last year's pace. That's impressive. And the four-week rolling average is 333 units. So 3.3% fewer listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year while selling 3.9% fewer condos. And that's a pretty equal week in my books. There are 191 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $715,000 and a median sales price of $503,000. Now, this same week last year, there were 196 condos that sold. So sales levels were down by about 2.6%. Months of inventory increased slightly to 2.24 months from last week's 2.23 months. And this is compared to the months of inventory levels that we saw back uh, this time last year at 2.12 months. Any chance you could just do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button? Believe it or not, it just plays with the YouTube algorithm. and just makes an enormous difference. And well, subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So please consider subscribing. Time to talk about interest rates. After last week's amazing week for interest rates, we had a little bit of a pullback. Each day, they'd move up sideways, but up ever so slightly. Don't get me wrong. Yes, rates went up slightly, but they're still much better. This is a victory in and of itself. We just went sideways and up just a little bit. But the paralysis of rates is because traders were just waiting. It was the weak jobs report, which gave us the tumble in interest rates. And now their eyes are fixed to the consumer price index and the producer price index. But as I fill this, the CPI data just came in lower than expected. Rates should continue to head down this week. This is some phenomenal news for home buyers. In a matter of just two weeks, you've got a 5% increase in your buying power, and that's going to most likely build. So CPI unexpectedly misses across the board. For inflation is the lowest in two years, and traders expected CPI to slow, but not this much. The headline CPI came in at 3.2%, which was below the expected 3.3%, while month over month CPI was unchanged, which was below the consensus of 0.1% print and sharply below the 0.4% print. This is amazing news to all of us consumers. The energy index fell 2.5% over the month over month with a 5% decline in the gas index. Now, that's awesome. And it's the cost of energy that's actually driving this down. The food index increased by 0.3% this month. Shelter in index increased by 0.3% this month as well. Lodging away from home index decreased 2.5% though. I guess people just don't have the money to go on vacations anymore. Motor Vehicle Insurance Index was up 1.9%. Medical Care Index was up 0.3%. The index for used cars and trucks fell 0.8% with household furnishings and new vehicles declining 0.1%. Are you noticing something? Because I think I am. All the stuff that we have to pay for, with the exception of energy, prices continue to rise. The items that are both discretionary, like new cars, furniture, travel, it's those prices that are going down. And with that, I guess it's time to get busy partying because... The big money guys, well, they are. I think the big news is that the market is no longer pricing in any more rate hikes in December or otherwise going forward. And the market is now giving roughly 25% odds of a rate cut in March and fully priced in two rate cuts by July. And these numbers may just be our point because historically speaking, it takes on average eight months from the last rate hike to see the first rate cut. And how about that? Rate cuts and an economic dip turnaround all in an election year. That might be the least surprising thing I think I've seen all year. So if this was all that happened, then what does that mean for housing? Lower interest rates are going to fuel more demand. We will still have limited inventory. So buyers beware. If this all plays out, then get ready for another crazy market where you have to go tens of thousands of dollars over asking price and finally get your house after writing your ninth offer on a house where you can't do an inspection and are waiving pretty much all of your other abilities to do some due diligence on what is most likely the largest investment and purchase you'll make in your life. It doesn't look like it's going to be long when buyers will yearn for the days of higher interest rates and a slower market. I want to talk about your own personal real estate needs, whether you're looking to buy in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you are thinking about possibly selling, then we can help you traditionally or even offer you a cash offer on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation, we can help you get it done. Also, should you know of anyone that is thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along my information. You can also visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com and just fill in your information and then we'll reach out to you. Questions or comments about any of this market data, then 
drop me a line in the comments section below. You take the time to watch the video, so well, I'm always going to take the time to respond to you. Until next time.